Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing around with the awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3650 Model 2. Again, last time we upgraded the CPU to the now new maximum performance Intel Xeon X5679 which is a 6 core 3.2 gigahertz processor that is sitting in there. I tried to upgrade the RAM. I got more RAM in there but I didn't get the maximum RAM frequency and I'm still... Um, I just recorded that a few hours ago and I still haven't figured it out. So um, I forgot to say that in the last video. If you know what I'm doing wrong there or if there is... Well it could be the CPU. This no name that Intel doesn't really put in their sheets. It might not do the high uh, memory frequency. I don't know. It could be that. But today we're gonna figure out if this Model 2 will actually do ESXi 7.0. That is on today's list of things to try and do. But I also want to try and put in some SSD boot device and also want to see how far we get with some NVMe drives in there. So yeah, I'm gonna shut it down. We're gonna go inside. So these are the stuff that we are gonna try and put inside. I am. Um, I have this board that I showed long ago. It's a PCI Express X4 board that we are going to be putting in there. It has an M.2 SSD using SATA up here, and then it has an M.2 NVMe down here, which uses the PCI Express port. And we have this NVMe drive that goes directly into the slot and doesn't have very much other than a couple of resistors and some LEDs. Never actually seen those LEDs do anything. Maybe today we'll see that. I have had this open a few times today, I must admit. There, take this cover off. I tried with some other RAM in the previous video. Uh, 16 gigabyte blocks, some high quality, some. I'm gonna take those out and put some, some of the 4 gigabyte blocks back in because this didn't work anyway and uh, well, it didn't give me the, the RAM frequency that I was looking for so, and um, we were really just checking if the RAM would do what I was hoping for it to do and it did not do that so, well now we're just gonna put in well that's gonna end up being 24 gigabytes of RAM that's plenty enough to see some VMware just running um, we don't need a lot of RAM to just check this and we might hopefully maybe you see this RAM being quicker than the other RAM and we have done something so never mind that that was really besides the point so now it has 24 gigabytes of memory instead of 96 gigabytes doesn't matter really um, down here we have the connections for the CD-ROM drive we're gonna borrow those as there is no extra it's right there there's a connection it says SATA connection and there's some power for the CD-ROM oh there is a thing key that you need to press on the back of it uh, that was hard to see we're gonna borrow that plug for our M.2 SSD and see if we can boot from that so let's take this riser card out here and put our things in here first let's put this one in um, NVMe drive, M.2 SSD drive, put that in there and, and then the tiny little M.2 NVMe to PCI Express X16 adapter which I have um, made shorter so that they will actually fit in an X8 like that so um, and may I add that these are available at my little shop links in the description and yeah, if it works, it's gonna be great. If it doesn't work, I'm probably not selling much of those in this video either. Oh dear, this is an eSATA connection. I didn't see that, that doesn't fit. Eh, need to get another cable. That's a shame, I like that black color in here. It looks very professional. This um, red color is not just not the same thing, but there. and that goes in nice okay 
that goes in. Battling a little bit with this cable, I had it on the wrong side. Okay, we are still only at 1067 megahertz, uh, 24 gigabytes of RAM, same CPUs of course. So uh, yeah, we're gonna try and go into the BIOS. By the way, this says that it's an X3550. It's not. It um, They use kind of the same motherboard and at some point this motherboard might have been swapped out or the BIOS just was wrong and got wrong firmware or I have no idea why it says that. But it is an X3650 Model 2. Just the system board does not know that. Okay, we got into the BIOS. Let's check our boot options here. We have something called Proxmox. I'm guessing that is what is on that half drive, that SSD. Uh, M.2 SSD in there. I'm guessing that is that is why. I did not see a USB stick in there. I must admit I might not have looked. But let's see boot manager, see what boot options we have available. Add boot option. So we have floppy drive. Nah. Yeah, there is nothing really interesting here. USB storage. I think we already have what we need. So in one of my previous videos, uh, people was commenting on me uh, using a bootable USB drive and telling me of other bootable USB options, including some really fancy ones where you put a hard drive in it. But someone also suggested something called VTOY, or VTOY, something like that. And I'm, I've tried that, I've installed it on my, I always carry around a 128 gigabyte USB stick. Um, who knows when somebody wants to purchase Hillary's emails or Trump's tax returns. It's nice to have them close by, right? So um, I installed this software on here. I haven't tested it yet. I just installed the software and put some ISO files on here. So um, we're gonna see if that was enough. There. 12 to select boot device and we need to select some USB storage. We're gonna select USB storage. See what it comes up with. Anything? Yeah. Oh, this looks nice. So these are the ISO files that I put on there. Server 2019 and three different versions of ESXi. 6.5, 6.7, 7.0. It's the 7.0 that um, we're gonna try out. So might as well just try that. That was easy. Oh, would you look at that? It's, it's our new CPU. That's nice. The X5679, 3.2 gigahertz. It also sees the wrong system board. Oh, we have a lot of installation possibilities here. We have the ATA, we have two NVMe, and we have a Samsung flash. That would be a bad idea. That's the that's my USB key. So let's not install on that. Would be very interested to see if it would be able to install on the NVMe drive here. I do not believe that the M2 is able to boot from NVMe. So um, yeah, it didn't show up anywhere. So I think we should try this M.2 SSD instead, try and install on that. Oh dear, what a party pooper. It says that the, the CPUs are not supported for, um, for ESXi 7.0. Uh, and it doesn't give us any, yeah, we can't go further. We can reboot or we can go back, which um, brings us to the same point really. That's a shame. Nah. So for this server we would have to go with the ESXi 6.7 update 3. Let's just try and put that in on there instead then. It uh, also recognizes the new CPU, so that's good. Drives available for installation are the same. 
And here it warns us that this CPU might not be working in the next version of ESXi. Yeah, we noticed that. Ah. Okay, that installed, no problems whatsoever. So um, it took IP number 30 at the end. So let's go check if, um, if it sees the NVMe drives. I managed to get this installed. Um, I had to change the IP number, it wouldn't see it. I think it was conflicting with something else, but never mind that. But if we go down here to storage, we will see that it has data store one, and that's the SSD that we installed the system on. It uh, makes the rest of the SSD, uh, which is not using for the operating system, the VMware ESXi, well, it makes that to a, a, a data store. If we want to see the other parts of the storage, the NVMEs, they are up here under devices. There, uh, we get our one NVMe here. That is the king spec, uh, I think. This one is the 256 gigabyte king spec. The other one there, that's the Samsung 500 gigabytes, uh, 960 EVO. So both of those I could make into new data stores and have running here on my VMware server. Okay, that is cool. Okay, that was rather cool. Um, we didn't get ESXi 7.0 on there. CPUs, sadly enough, are too old. It's a real bugger. I would have liked to see VMware support those longer. Apparently, if you wanna run ESXi 7.0, the oldest server that you can install that on, on the IBM slash Lenovo, is the M4. And that is still a very expensive server, so yeah. But as we saw in a previous video, it does actually run on the Lenovo Mini here, the tiny M93. You can run ESXi 7 on that. It's really weird because this is a cheap machine and this one is rather more expensive so yeah there's that we tried out the multi-boot usb works great thank you very much for those suggestions also got other suggestions where you could actually with a little display pick which uh, iso file it was to boot from might want to try one of those another time i do not at present time have one of those but um, this one i could do right away yeah? and it was totally open source so it didn't cost anything. Please remember to give this video a little like down there. And if you want to support what I do, well, one of the great things to do is to uh, visit my little store, see if there are some of my old crap that um, needs a new home, your home. And uh, if you yourself are in need of good hardware, I very much recommend Bargain Hardware in the UK. And that is bargainhardware.co.uk. And if you check out with the coupon code or the checkout code or the promo code I don't know what to call that code but if you punch in my playhouse small letters you get 5% off of your purchase and that also helps to support the channel because I get a huge kickback and I'm laughing all the way to the bank yeah and it's a bloody long way to the bank from here so do check out bargainhardware.co.uk and see if they might have your next new server. They carry most brands and all the time they get new used stuff in. So make sure to check their site from time to time. Also they have um, desktop PCs, workstations, laptops and so on. I'm rambling ain't I? So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.